Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for Saturday, December 17th, 2022. The time is now 9.05 a.m. Our first item on the agenda is for the Pledge of Allegiance. I ask that everybody please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. For anyone interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room. Uh, as always, these meetings are recorded for both audio and video. They are available uh, on YouTube shortly thereafter the meeting. Um, so I still need to put the ones for last month on. That's okay, I didn't get um, a phone call yet. Yeah, yet. Uh, anyone wishing to address the board can do so by coming up to the microphone. Please be sure to speak clearly towards the microphone, state your name and address. And if you have not done so already, please sign in on the sheet so that we know who, who had the public comment. Um, at this time, I'll open up the floor to public comment. Yeah. Is I, anybody uh, on Zoom? Nobody is on Zoom right now. I'll I'll keep an eye on it though and let you know if anybody joins. Um, so I think they actually have an agenda item, which okay. is why they signed in. So okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we're good. So seeing no public comments at this time, we'll move into the main items for discussion. The first is the Act 537. Uh, we have our friends Joe and Kim with us today, um, so I'll cover a couple of things and I'll turn it over to them for a HydroTerra update. So as we've talked about for the past couple of months, the SEO is actively doing inspections in the Northwest District and will soon send out letters to the property owners in the East District for the inspections that need to be done in 2023 and 2024. Uh, HydroTerra completed the existing dwelling unit or EDU evaluation for the proposed sewer service area. We also have Mr. Lewis Hurst from AU Associates who would like to develop a 25-acre parcel, half of which is in Marion, half of which is in Heidelberg, and would like assurances that we're willing to accept these residents as customers. Um, Andy suggested that we have an agreement uh, with WSA regarding this development or address this development in the agreement he is currently working on between us and the WSA. Um, personal side note, I think we should just add that into the WSA agreement that Andy's working on right yes, now. It's, yes. it's the cleaner of the two options. Um, we have also received a letter from attorney John Muir, who represents WSA, indicating that they are requesting an escrow from us in an amount of $7,500 and an escrow agreement. Apparently, uh, the legal engineering fees have already exceeded $1,000. So um, I'll start with the housekeeping, I'll make a motion to approve the escrow amount of $7,500 for the WSA. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Um, either of you have anything you'd like to add? Otherwise, I'll turn it over to our friends from Hydroterra. Okay, well, um, Joe Boldez from Hydroterra. We really just came in for social call today. Okay. Uh, wanted to wish it, you know, all y'all, uh, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and Happy Holidays. Uh, we did complete the um, EDU count uh, for the township, and I believe that what was in the 537 plan was pretty much in line. Um, we would like to get together after the holiday with the committee of the supervisors and maybe the attorney would talk about going forward um with that and and some other possible designs um update on that intermunicipal agreement andy and i have been and colin uh have been working together and i want to tell you that it's been a real pleasure working with both john andy and colin uh putting that together they're very responsive and i feel like we have a good uh format to start with at this point uh, I do agree that it makes sense if uh, Mr. Hurst and his development would or was seriously looking to do some development in there. It may make sense to add that in at the same time because they would be asking for sewer capacity uh, from Marion Township into normal school. Um, I think we really were just maybe hoping to throw out there that we get together for a committee meeting to talk about uh, the EDU analysis and, and then the other design that we we're looking at. Still waiting on some numbers for that low pressure system. Uh, you think that'd be like a January item or a yeah, February item? I'm thinking it's probably um, after the holiday would be good. 
Okay. Uh, it's been a little slow to get some information from uh, some of the, the um, suppliers. So. We, know, we know how that goes. Oh, boy. <laughs> Slower than ever, but again, just a social call to wish everybody, uh, you know, happy holiday and, you know, thank you for uh, considering us for your engineering services and what a beautiful drive up here this morning. So that's my update. Ken, if you want to say anything. I want to walk up. We haven't gotten any news on the grant proposal that we submitted. Um, that's normal. It's taking also longer than ever to hear back on, you know, things that are submitted. However, that's, that's part and parcel of the game. I'm hoping to get an update after the holidays. Um, I called their office and they got a certain number of applications. It seems expected and I think, you know, pretty decent number, nothing, nothing too crazy. So overall, we're just waiting to hear your news again. And I personally wanted to wish everybody a happy holiday, Merry Christmas, um, Happy New Year. And like Joe mentioned, I'm excited to really put all of our heads together once January comes and you know, back on that floor. So absolutely thank you guys it was, it's always thank great you. to see you guys happy uh holidays merry christmas happy new year and uh we really as a board we all appreciate the the hard work and, and yes. the effort that you guys put in it's it's really beneficial and we really do appreciate it yes it's well, really nice to work with people that uh want to see things go forward i've had some new clients over the years where you know, a lot of lipstick out there they want to do something <laughs> and they charge down and have their own event and really want to do it. But, you know, it's nice to work with, you know, the attorneys have been great. You all have been great. And we think, you know, we can figure the way out of this problem. And keep DEP happy, right? Yeah. Yeah. DEP is happy. <laughs> but uh, the, as far as the EDU analysis is, is uh, as far as the EDU analysis, you all have a copy of that. If there's any questions before we get together, any clarifications on it. Uh, certainly, you can reach out to Ken and I in the office. Uh, there's a couple maps in there where, you know, there's some, there, there are some parcels out there where uh, we're uncertain and where it would be nice to get a little bit understanding of what you might think the potential is or the situation out there with one of the parcels. Uh, I believe we said that last time for everybody. Yeah, so when there's color code on the maps, take a look at it. If not, we'll get together every few years. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And then while we have uh, our friends here, um, you, you come on up. But uh, I'll kind of lead the conversation and say that I, I have no objections to including you in the agreement for capacity. None whatsoever. So that pretty much answers my big question. Yeah. You know, because yeah. when we were at the last meeting, there was a shortfall of the amount of EDUs that were available. Is that the, at the West? Yeah. Right. And so that now has seen the cured itself because the, the West one across the street from Stone Crow. Um, like almost well, sure authority does have the I'll show you that. that. So okay. want to be Good. sure that shifting to some of that capacity would be shifting to, mm -hmm. and you're saying that we're going to be wrapped into that agreement. Yeah, the, the goal here is when we redo that that agreement is a number of things, um, largely becoming a bulk rate commercial customer rather than individuals, as well as making sure that we're kind of future-proofed on a lot of things, because that agreement is at least 10 years old. Okay. Um, and we try to be as forward-thinking as we can. So it's not just the immediate, okay, what do we need right. to do right now, but to include... Uh, individuals like your, yourself who are going to be developing or anything like that. So we want to make sure that that, that agreement is as encompassing as it can be, which and will just, include just you. To clarify, when you mentioned bulk, these are going to be individual customers, I would assume, each household. Yes, each yeah. So okay. bulk bulk customer in the sense that uh, WSA would build Marion Township. Marion Township would effectively be a pass-through to each individual household. Um, so I, I guess... Really, then I know. Once... I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> it's the it's the best way to it's do it. Yes, yes, yes. But yes, and then I get to send nasty letters, and people don't yeah. want to pay. Yes. Yeah. So if I understand it correctly, sure. then once this intermutable agreement is finalized, we're going to be a part of that. That would be our assurance that yeah. we now have the capacity. You know, normally we just get a letter from yeah. the township saying we have capacity. Yeah. In this case, it's a bit. We different. it's a bit different because yeah. we don't actually physically have any of that yet. Right. But uh, the the goal here is to get that in writing in that agreement. Otherwise, there's really no Right. hard promises that we can make around that until that agreement's in place and the timeline on, timeline on that uh, uh, I'm, honestly i'm i'm not sure I, yeah 
Yeah. And, yeah. you know, yeah. knowing that, yeah. and we're going to obviously move forward with our engineer drawings and start to get that with the boundary token of what has been done. So now we can get into some, some drawings and get in front of you guys with yeah. that. Uh, at what point will we know what the EDU costs are and what the arrangement is? That's uh, that's still kind of in, in flux. Part of that is going to be system design, which okay. we're going to be talking about hopefully in January. Mm -hmm. Some of that's going to be grants that are available. There, there's a lot of things that are still in the mix on that. So again, unfortunately, I can't okay. I can't throw so a number. Kind of a, now, so there's actually a amount on the seal. Yeah. Right. But, uh, there, there's a section in the in the uh, draft agreement that talks about the fees for previous upgrades and traffic fees, mm -hmm. that's going to have to be negotiated. Okay. And that'll probably be in that agreement at that point. Once the agreement is finalized, those numbers will be a part of that. That's what we're going yeah. to expect. Okay. Uh, you know, we're working on the living attorney from uh, both the Walmart's work and, and the, the townships attorney. Okay. Uh, it seems like that's the direction we're going. I mean, they're, they're locals, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm just a sewer guy. <laughs> okay. It seems like that's yeah. the direction. Okay. <laughs> That looks very promising, and I'm we can do that. Yeah, at the this isn't going to be treated like stone. Like stone. And they, that sounds like no, they actually they want to be included. Like Stonecroft, the reason Stonecroft is done the way Stonecroft is, is done is they were the only sewer customers right. at the time, and they went directly to Walmart store. Um, these, so I think it's another so yeah, uh, Stonecroft is uh, Walmart store sewer authority customer. Correct, right? correct. Yeah. But they go directly through Walmart store rather than going through the township, and just. For information purposes, we had been in front of Heidelberg and they really didn't want to get into the sewer business at all. So yeah. they will be West uh, or uh, I keep saying West because of yeah, 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 WSA. Yeah, yeah. Uh, WSA. Yeah. yeah, is going to take on those customers, yeah, that are in Heidelberg. Yeah, which is about a third of the community, yeah, two thirds of it is in the area. So, Jim, I don't know if you're up. So, the parcel he bought is half in Heidelberg, yeah. half yeah. in yeah. Heidelberg. Yeah. okay, right next to Stone Club. Okay, thank you. But I just, I just assume, and I should never assume, but I just assume that it would be treated the same way that we are in Stonecroft, that it would just get billed through. I mean, it's, it's an option. Authority. It's an option, but I think for the sake of consistency, the, the idea is to have everybody, Stonecroft is kind of the exception. If they were, if Stonecroft were built, like the time frame that they're going to be building or after that. It would be done very differently than it was originally and it's the same reason that you have like your own dedicated water is there was yeah. none of that infrastructure at the time anywhere in the township so as we're starting to i'll say modernize certain <laughs> certain aspects and things um it, it's going to start to to change the dynamic of how we engage certain agreements and arrangements well i just now we're going to be in the billing business and we well are, so we are. so we one of the things billing yeah company too. yeah yeah so most our sewer authority doesn't do their own billing they hire, they hire somebody out to do it they're out of billing so yeah, I, I know i don't know how that would work we'd have to talk to andy but i I'd, I'd imagine if stonecroft wanted to go the route of going bulk customer rate with marion we could probably work something out because at the end of the day when you flush the toilet it still goes to the same place it's just yeah. getting the billing set up Okay. So I guess okay. anything that you guys would need out of me through this process, yeah, we'll, we will all our contact. We'll let you know, and if there's any big formative developments, we'll be yeah. sure to, to pass it I'm along to you. I'm not sure that I'll be at the Thursday night meeting unless there's a reason to be. I, um, I don't think there's yeah. any real strong reason yeah, for you. Just yeah. talk about yeah. stuff today, right. and it's well, talked about on Thursday. Big too. question yeah. got answered here this morning. Okay, okay. what the our what our position is, and we've got yeah. that with passing. I'm gonna, we're going to be a part of that. So that's yeah. great. Yeah, so we we're we're happy to support the yeah, we'll the development sure of the community and we'll make uh, sure that you're included and you, yeah. it goes somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure when it's, as long as it doesn't come back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, thanks so much for your time. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Okay. Uh, anything else for Act Five Thirty Seven from the board? Thank you guys again for all your hard work. I really appreciate it. It's nice to get the information. It's clear. It's concise. It's well written and. It's easy to follow, and that makes it so much nicer for all of us here. I think so. Thank you again for everything that you do. Thanks for digging us out of this hole. <laughs> yeah, we've all got a yeah, shovel now. I want to say we're still digging. We're still digging. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're still digging. But there's a plan in place, and we're following it. And this way, we could show that our homework is being done. When the DEP asks a question, we have the right people to help us answer it. So. Oh, thank you. Kim's <laughs> doing a great job. I didn't get a double pass. She is a great job. Okay, 
Next agenda item is the emergency management coordinator report. Uh, we actually have our emergency management coordinator in the building today. So, John, I don't know if you want to come up and pull up a chair or stand at the microphone, whatever strikes your fancy. Have a good weekend. Yep. Yep. Take care. Merry Christmas. Just, just pull up. Yeah. Just, just, just pull up a chair. You're going to be talking for a while. Well, this this part free because the yeah hold on the uh, municipal action plan um, should just came in the old one and nothing on the new one is closed. So we're going to be doing that for a while. I'm going to do that and put it on board everybody else. But, um, I mean, we can circle back to that. Um, yeah. Uh, again, I don't know how long that's going to take, but um, let's see. First, to request a, uh, we're going to need to contact the fire company and set up a meeting with them, preferably a Saturday in January. Um, that will probably be another long agenda. The, uh, without getting into too much detail on it. Uh, the drone has been acquired. I, uh, I don't know if you get a chance. Here. I did a little video yesterday. Um, flew out in the parking lot, flew around a little bit um, just to show some people the capabilities of it. But uh, um, primarily, again, purchased for uh, storm damage assessment, anything else that needs to be done, um, anything that we need aerial for the uh, walk number. But the, uh, I was messing around out here in the lot yesterday um, just to show you some of the capabilities. And I tell you what, the camera's amazing on so you That is a really good so picture. You take a, a picture of all the cracks in the wall there. Well, that's yeah. a mess. <laughs> well, you can see towards the end, I zoom in on some windows that I can see the striker still in the building. Um, but the capability on this is going to be great. Uh, I've been working with a lot of other. Uh, EMCs throughout the county and actually several counties. Nice. So within the last couple of days, I actually completed my first FAA certification as a drone pilot. Um, we will, well, I will be doing what's called a Park 107 because I need to work up to a commercial um, license for it, which is honestly just short of actually being a regular pilot. It'll be a unmanned airborne vehicle. Um, which is actually pretty neat. There's a lot of a lot of hours and testing involved, but it is what it. Oh, I know my brain hates it. It is what it is. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'll deal with it. The uh, but for flooding, storm damage, wind damage, stuff like that. Trust me, it gets a little better than this, especially when I head towards the creek. Um, and then there was a somebody in a pickup truck driving by, and I wanted to see if they were going to run the stop sign, so I zoomed in on them <laughs> a mile away. They actually stopped. They're well over the double yellow. Not that for that, but I did notify uh, Chief Dronick at uh, Tulpahawk and PD that we do have this capability. And then over the next month or two, finishing my certifications on it. Um, it's 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 just cool. But as far as on the uh, again for any kind of assessments we need done, anything from culverts, storm damage, whatnot. And yeah, I talked to uh, the drone officer down at Western Burks. Um, he now knows that we have one, that they need a secondary drone for uh, any kind of daytime search operations. All I have to do is add the strobe to it, and I can't fly at night legally. Um, some of the things I have to, I have to maintain visual uh, line of sight is the official terminology for wherever I'm operating at. So as long as I can see it, whether the blinking light, which you can see up to three miles away once I add the strobe to it, uh, we're going to be good. My maximum altitude that I can fly here is 400 feet. And I've only gone up to about 250. Yeah. yeah. What's that? Put some of these pictures on our website. <laughs> well, I want to do a lot more with it because of the capability as we build capabilities, emergency management, what we're going to be able to do. How much is the strobe kit? Uh, and two of them and they're $30 a piece, That's $29.99. That's peanuts. So 60 bucks. Um, <clears throat> but going over down, heading over to the creek here was actually pretty neat. Um, again, seeing where our issues could be, because I mean, this is the areas we've searched before when we've had uh, uh, search operations. When we call up 66 from Lebanon, we have Western come over, 
And I know Western's going to be a little limited on because their drone pilot, Alex, a good friend of mine, just took the chief's job over in Muhlenberg, so he's not going to be around like he was. But we don't have the thermal imaging capability, stuff like that, but they do um, maybe someday. But being able to see, uh, wow. and, and it's just, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, yeah. Uh, this is the uh, truck come up here in a minute. Just to, again, I know some of the PDs have really uh, shown some interest, but uh, and then I'll zoom in on the, the upper windows procedure shortly. Well, no, you were under budget for some of the items that yeah. you purchased. Yeah. So. yeah, it was actually to get the, the one vest that we need. Uh, um, you see the pickup truck there, so there he is. And I mean, I tell you what, there's a lot of laws involved with flying a drone, and I'm working on the, uh, it's a public safety program for us. What are you talking about? I know, oh, I mean, he, he, he stopped. I mean, mar marginally. Yeah. <laughs> that was like a lie if I ever saw it. That was. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like some like some of the criteria. Unless until I get the Part One Hundred Seven and then we get a special uh, um, license and whatnot, that I'll have probably within the next month. You actually you can't fly over people. There's a lot of restricted flies. We don't have anything in Marion that's restricted. Like uh, obviously, I can't go towards the Reading Airport. That would be a bad thing. Yeah. Um, and then there's actually a second video, real quick. It's a much shorter one. Nobody shot you out of the sky. Oh, there's 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 some interesting stuff with that. That's uh, FAA. Somebody tries to shoot a drone out. Um, I mean, obviously, you're not at somebody's window. So it's it's there's actually a voyeurism thing in there. Um, if we were to try to look at somebody, per se, like go up to somebody's house, which you can't do unless the law enforcement has a warrant and they're doing it, we can't, and I have no interest to. But, like, for us, the township, I can do anything I want with the township building. That's where... When I got to the uh, um, the windows and whatnot, but for that's just for assessment here, but also again, damage. If somebody, a tree comes down on somebody's house, we're going to be able to go out and check it out when I have to do the FEMA paperwork and FEMA paperwork for damage. The computer's um, having a moment. It's, uh, what's that? I think the computer's having a moment. Okay. So we'll watch, I'll put it out on the drive. Uh, and then uh, the command stuff will be ordered in a little bit. Um, it's just been a lot, an understatement is a lot <laughs> over the last couple months again. The, the uh, state changed the criteria again for certifications, which I've completed everything local level, and then I've just completed all my executive. Um, what? Jim didn't know the response. Yeah, they it's built It's an eye-opening experience, so. The only thing I have to be careful of is if we're flying along the Tulpa Hawkins, is the Ospreys and the Eagles, they have a tendency to attack drones. Mm -hmm. More hawks even, but huh. mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I thought, you know, should I should I like paint it and make it look like? And I did bring it all open it up later. Um, it did come in a very small bag. It said a protective bag, which I thought was a joke. So I took one of the hard cases I have. Um, I just say donated, but I cut that out and the drone and controls and batteries and everything fit in there perfectly. Right. So I just uh, first let in love. There are yeah, we have there's, enough things set right down the house. Right I was going to say, there's there's like one right in my all backyard. All the eagles and off right yeah. on the screen. Those, those, huh. I almost said a bad word on camera, but the, uh, um, for the first two years we lived down on Tulpe, I couldn't catch, catch fish out of that creek. My life depended on it. They, they're pulling 24 inch rainbows out of there for, in their towns. And then one of her friends came over and oh, yeah. showed me the, what he was done. Now, now I'll limit every time I go back. But, um, but again, doing some of the culvert checks. I don't like the where we always have the flooding over the roadway on the uh, on canal. And we're last time to assess the culvert where I had to get down in the creek and start looking. And now I'm not doing that anymore. Um, that's why the drone and being able to zoom in and actually get better pictures than I can without getting totally soaked and covered in mud. Um, but it's definitely going to be a pretty big asset. And I've uh, talked to several departments around us, and they're like, let us know when you're available to start coming. I'm like, I, as soon as I finish that license, you need to call me. Um, but uh, so the 
municipal action plan will go over um, the drone, which I said I'll put out here. I'll, you know, I'll just set it up on the table so you all can see it now. But uh, other than that, we'll do the action plan towards the end. Okay, we'll move, move that to the end. Cool. Okay, thanks, John. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Dutch Valley Food Distribution, LERTA, or LERTA. Uh, we received an application for LERTA tax relief from Dutch Valley Foods. Uh, per Attorney Colin McFarland, we now need to adopt an ordinance to approve the tax exemption for Dutch Valley, uh, which is why they submitted another application. Yeah, so, I was a little confused on this whole process. Yeah, this so first one we've done. Let's, let's talk to Andy or Colin on Thursday night, because, I mean, we have to pass another ordinance, we have to pass another ordinance, mm -hmm. but... Um, I thought we just did that. Well, he's that's what I said. We did an ordinance. He yeah. said, well, that ordinance was basically to declare that area. Um, oh, so we basically we have to define the area and then grant yeah, the action. Uh, okay. He call it. Um, Neat, it's so tiny. They de to declare that area as another word I want to say. As being eligible for, for LERDA. Yeah. yeah. And now that we now actually have to say that we applied for the LERDA yeah. tax exemption. Or whatever okay. I mean, that, that kind of makes and sense. Need an, we need to approve that application. Okay. We'll, it, we'll, we'll do that Thursday night, but yeah, yeah that and makes still have it for Thursday night, but um, he might. Yeah. I mean, if he does, he does. If not, we do it in January. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next is the CWP LD on 37 Main Street. This is a bunch of self storage units. We are still waiting for the property owner to sign the improvements agreement and stormwater agreement and provide the financial surety letter and letter of credit. Until we have that, there's really no further actions that we have to take. Yeah, just, just waiting for that agreement, yep. then to sign that agreement. Yep. Next item is the Creekview Dairy Operation on 952 Route 419. This is Jason, uh, excuse me, Jason Rickards from BCCD issued an inspection report. A swale was created that collected the runoff from the additional driveway culverts that were installed, plus the outflow from the retention basin that is uh, then conveyed directly to the downstream culvert beneath 419. This results in the drainage not being treated for water quality since it bypasses the vegetated filter strip required by the NPDES permit that was shown on the plans. As a result, the property owners are required to amend the NPDES permit and or revise the plans to address the situation by providing a corrective action plan, which has to indicate an alternative means for treatment that might require additional site construction or justify what was constructed will provide the same similar or similar results. So, um, so at this Chuck might have an update Thursday night, but as of this point, yeah, at this point, we're just waiting for them to waiting. Yeah. So if they're not compliant, what's what happens? If they get fined? I don't know. Right. So they're, I think their their letter of credit is still out, isn't it, for that one? Yes. So, yeah. it so would, that's one way. Yeah, as yeah. I say, we we if they completely say like no, we're not right. doing it, then you invoke the letter of credit and you yeah. send somebody out and you make the corrective actions. But, but Jason Rickards from BCCD um, kind of indicated that what is there is functioning. They just have to do the paperwork to make it match. Yeah, what's there? And that's okay. kind of what we when we talked about mm -hmm. this originally is like mm -hmm. it's it probably okay but you got to file the stuff so it's legit mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. okay next is the road projects for 2023 along with culverts um mccarthy engineering did hear back from monarch they have started production this past week and will have the reichert road culvert finished by the week of december 26th they will schedule delivery anytime after that so butch will need to coordinate with ryan allgaier about uh getting getting things staged okay um what I would like to do is instead of renting uh, road closed detour signs and stuff like that, coordinate with Butch and Ryan, find out what we need because we're going to be using them a bunch. Buy them. Just buy them from yep. MSI. I think it's going to be ultimately cheaper yep. for this year and going forward. And do we um, need to close roads because of flooding and stuff? Well, that's what I'm saying. We're going to get yeah. we're going to get the use out of them. Um, so I'll I'll make a motion in a minute here. But uh, I'm going to want to buy some signs is the, the long and short of it. That's the agenda, too. Oh, is it? Um, Purchase signs and bolts. Yeah. Okay, number eight. So I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. save my commentary for that then. Um, uh, to do roughly one to two weeks notice uh, is going to be needed so that we can get everybody coordinated and get all the, the trucks reserved and everything for delivery. Uh, the permit application has been resubmitted for the culvert on Marion Drive north of School Road. Uh, we got a call that the road is sinking over this particular culvert. 
And uh, engineer Chuck has checked it out and recommended that we put down a steel plate, uh, which the road crew has has already taken care of. He's also recommended that we put a steel plate ahead sign uh, on either side of the culvert. Um, that's going to be part of my upcoming motion Just for sign purchases. Yeah, there. yeah. Um, but that's that's in the the sign order. Um, as a side note, I did send the order over for the park signs for the ice skating rink. When they are ready, I will let Butch know to go pick them up. Um, but I'll just I'll tag one to my my email to MSI asking for the additional signs once we approve them today. Peter, yes. Uh, we are have those uh, steel plate signs that she was calling. Uh, I I know I know. So well, that's I, on the agenda. Yeah, so those it. those are probably pre made, whereas the park signs they're going to actually have to yeah. make. Okay. They they may be able like if I put the order in on Monday they may say like yeah just come pick them up so I'll have to let you know what what MSI tells me. Okay. Hi Kelly. What's the one inch on that? I can show it to you then. Yeah. Um, you had a question, John? Yeah, here, hold on. Um, I know for two years ago, when we not get all the road closed signs out there at Burnville, they had steel plate signs out there made, or they could make them. I think it was a point for Yeah. 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 With yeah. all the road projects, everything. We're, we're, yeah. We should we should just have them. Yeah. It's yeah. So hey, Kelly, do you want to you want to see it real quick? Yeah. Everything's being handed over to Chuck at this point, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And I sort of um, the the culvert projects. I yeah, that's what I'll send it. I to said to Chuck. Um, as of now, McCarthy's still handling them because it's, it's they're like the ones who basic stuff. started like, that like with Monarch. Right. But I think. I, I said, I think as of the weird. beginning of the year, everything's going to be turned over to you. I wasn't, yeah. I think that's what you guys said. Yeah, we're, we're, that... we're turning everything over with the exception of if there is something that McCarthy Engineering is like midstream on and it's not a smooth handoff, yeah. having them get it to where they can hand it off to Chuck and then making the transition. Okay. Like we don't want to have them hand over like a half finished drawing or something right. like that. That just doesn't make sense. And so I think with the next culvert that Monarch makes, it should that be can Chuck. Get Chuck. 100% Chuck. The shop drawings are like nice. Yes, 100%. I didn't print out shop drawings because it's like 16 pages of stuff that I have. Yeah. Like we don't have no clue what it no. means. No, keep the keep the digital copy of that, but yeah, don't bother printing that. that out. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and he said the um, the culvert on Marion is basically the bottom of the um, metal culvert is gone. Yeah. So therefore, the ground is washing away on the sides, and everything's just sinking. Sinking. So we need to close the road. And he said, had we had that not been on the list to do, that road would be closed. Yeah. Yeah, if it gets much worse, because it's we're, getting worse and worse. And yeah, worse. if it gets much worse, and we got to keep an eye on it, we may have to close that, um, and that's going to be uh, a situation and, where, and that's the permit we're waiting for. Yeah. Uh, we'll uh, to close the road. Uh, we we have the 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 cement things. Yeah. Across. We don't have to get anything. Oh, that, that's good. That's good. Because I know the last time we put up sore horses and cones, people just moved they them. They just moved them. Yeah. yeah. No, we, we have this cement car. Really okay. So, um... I mean, they're out there. They're out there. They're always... Yeah, we just have to rotate them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I put the motion on here because you really should make a motion to put the steel plate down. Okay. In that case, In I, I just to, to make it official, I will make a motion to apply the steel plate to... Was that Marion? Marion Drive North of School? Marion North of School. Yeah. Okay. Second. Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. And Butch, do you like go and check that routinely? Um, and if, routinely. Yeah. yeah. Say, and if you don't, can you? Yeah, can, <laughs> can you? Can you make that a habit? Yeah, just, you know, when you're out, just make it part of your check. Yeah. I'm the way and I'm yeah. Holding yeah. Um, just to keep us up to date. Yeah, you're your eyes and ears on that. Yeah, when it when it becomes yeah. a situation where we think it's a safety hazard, yeah, we we immediately close the road. And then if it's a situation where it's out of cycle, like it's between meetings, close it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, talk to one of us, but close it, and then we'll ratify it at the next meeting. And so. then road crew just has to be careful when they plow over that steel plate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'd say, uh, we'll, we'll through all the the, ah, we'll, we'll go over those, yeah, we'll go over those makes sense. 
Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Next is the Crane Rental. We received a quote from Dickinson's uh, Dickinson and Sons Incorporated for Crane Rental for the Reichert Road Culvert Project. Crane and labor per eight hour day is four thousand two hundred dollars. Overtime per hour over eight hours is six hundred and forty dollars. Uh, trucking and permits for round trip is around $1,100. The lift plan, if required, is $250. A site visit is required to determine weight radius and crane accessibility. Um, that's so actually... Ryan is going to try to get us two more quotes from okay. different... Because I said if we use liquid fuels money, the auditor makes three quotes. So yeah. he's going to work on that. But I put it as a motion just in case... I mean, you don't have to, but yeah, let's so let's table know. it until we have the other he, two. He was surprised how cheap that was. I was actually going to comment that I was expecting far worse. Yeah, I talked to him, and he he was he said I was floored that that was at that cheap. Yeah, so, so let's let's get the two just to have yeah. our basis, the two other ones just to have the bases covered. But I'm I'm surprised there's not another zero on the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, thanks to Ryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks. Big thank you to Ryan for. The, all the time and effort that he's been working on this. Maybe we better prove it before they change their mind. <laughs> well, <laughs> just if we do use liquid fuels money, we we, so we, we get into hot water, water if we don't have the yeah, three. We get yeah. a so, yeah. so I I would say let's let's do this. Let's give Ryan until the the January meeting, and if we don't have the other two for any reason from the January meeting, this is a low enough amount that we can fit it into the the general fund budget. We'll approve it in January, but. If we can, let's get the other two so that we can use liquid fuels for this. Well, I'll need you guys then to look at the liquid fuels budget carefully because I think as it is right now, we have just enough money for all the projects as planned. Yeah, we'd have we might have to move some stuff out yeah. of the money market, but no, I'm saying including money. Oh, including the money market. Yeah. Okay. So well we'll, we we'll have to take a look at all the numbers. We should have about yeah. two hundred thousand dollars left over after all the all the planned projects. We'll, we'll take a look. Yeah, we'll take a look at it. If you, I'm assuming you have all your numbers somewhere. Yeah, there I have. So that we could we could take a look at that, and I'll give you the most up to date date um, uh, account balances. Okay. Okay. Peter. Yes. Uh, can can we uh, can we start with this project uh, on Ryder Road? Uh, do we have to change our name? Um, I mean, no, we can we can start, but keep in mind the um. Culvert isn't going to be ready until the 26th, so we have to coordinate delivery roughly one to two weeks minimum after and that. He, so Ryan had originally a couple months said to me, he it was his understanding that they would manufacture the culvert, they would print it out in the yard to cure yeah. for several weeks. He didn't know how long. Yeah. He doesn't know if the January 6th is, includes the curing yeah. or does not include the curing. So at, at this point, yeah. he he's like I. So we we got to play it by ear is the bottom yeah. line. If yeah. if if some like if Monarch calls and says, "Hey, it's ready to go on the day after Christmas," then we'll we'll figure it out how to make it work right. so that you guys can get started before the next meeting. But right. um, I would say just kind of keeping a holding pattern. We'll approve it at the next meeting and say like, "You're you're free to schedule." You're, you're approved to go yeah, so yeah, just know. yeah. And yeah it's much like the steel plate or the road closure yeah. if if the opportunity presents itself we will figure out a way with andy to make sure that it's legitimate so okay. and if he and if he gets me the three quotes for the crane and the supervisors can decide which one they want to use and then just approve that at the next meeting yeah you can do that too yeah, yeah. Okay, next item on the agenda is the purchase of signs and poles. Um, we, need, we are going to need two steel plate ahead signs. Uh, the ice skating rink signs, uh, we actually previously approved, so I've, I've sent the order into MSI for those. Um, that included the park hours on it. Um, I'm going to need to, actually, I think I didn't order those with MSI, but the, the picture that you had sent of the park signs. Yeah, and that's signed up by the park. Yeah, hours. yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I did not order those. I will add them to, like, the uh, road close detour stuff that I'm going to be ordering, but I I did not do that and will. Um, and the polls for the electronic speed sign, Butch got two polls at Paul B uh, for a good price. They were about a, a 90 bucks a pole, I want to say, which was astronomically cheaper than the other one. So I told him to get it and that we'd approve it at the next meeting. 
Um, so, I, Sue, I, I know you hate it when I make multiple motions, but I'm going to make multiple motions. Okay. So the first one is to uh, approve the purchase of the two poles at Paul B for a total of $211.87 for the speed signs. Second. Okay. Jim, second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. All right. Okay, next motion is to authorize the purchase of um, four park hour signs, two road closed signs. Wait, four park hour. Yep. Two road closed. Yep, and six detour signs and two steel plate ahead signs. Anything you need? And a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay, got it. Uh, is there a second? Do we have a second? Is there a second? Second. Um, roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Now, Frank, the last the last time we had to close a road, we had to rent them because we didn't have them. So we figure we're going to have enough of this stuff. Where we're going to be doing road cl closures and detours and all this stuff over the next year and potentially in the future. It makes sense to buy them rather than rent them time after time after time. We, do, we don't know. At least the last time we looked when we had the, the thing with the one road, we had to, to close it out is they, no, they were non-existent. So we had to go out and rent stuff. So, yeah. 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 So um, I have one last motion to make in conjunction with this. Um, okay. I, I believe you had gotten a quote for the uh, the post hole digger, the auger, for like 70 bucks. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't have the exact figure with me, but I'd like to, to was, make them. A, a two man was around 70. Well, I'm just, I'm just going to say under $100. So yeah. I'd like to approve the rental of a post hole digging auger uh, for up to $100. Second. Jim, second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Okay. And are we all okay with the suggested placement that I had, that we have one pointing uh, east on, like, the kind of as you enter town, and then the other one on the opposite yes. side of town as you come up over the hill Which pointing west? Which exactly? Well, I'll, I'll figure that out with him, and I'll mark it on a map, but... Yes. Um, we're, I'm going to have to walk it just to be, to be entirely honest, to make sure that the placement's right. We have good line of sight. That we don't have any like trees or bushes or anything like that. And it's in a spot that isn't going to be a huge well, pain. The West end, there's a yard, like a Carson mm -hmm. Peter Wallace yeah. on the other side street. Yeah. There's a yard that yeah. doesn't have so, trees. So even, even though it's <laughs> technically in the right of way, we should probably send a letter to the people that have the property there just as yeah. a, a an FYI that we're going to be doing this so that it doesn't come as a complete surprise why people are digging up their lawn. Um, so. Sure. And I have something too. I forgot to put something on here. Uh, if, if you put it in a town where the people park, uh, if you have a car plunge in front of that side. Yeah. Go, go no, and this this is why I want to walk it. I mean, we need to make sure that it has a decent line of sight and we don't have like a situation where somebody parks a, a pickup truck or a yeah. minivan or something in front of it, or we don't have it pointing where there's a bush blocking half of its yeah. view, you know, that that sort of thing. But the general placement is as you start to cross the hill on the west side of town, having that there so that if people are still flying off the highway, that it says what the speed is. And then conversely, on the east side of town, as you start to have people coming up the hill from like the Stonecroft direction, Wollesdorf direction, that if they are moving a little faster than they should, that it maybe hopefully gives them an indicator and they they slow down a bit. We had some tailgating so. up this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People people drive way too fast yeah. down Main Street. Um, I got to check and see where the uh, the pedestrian signage is at and and see if i need to call that company um as soon as they get here i'm just going to go pop them out on on main street but they're they're okay. not in yet so as soon as we have them they'll be there another sign um at the east end of town there's a old sign that butch took down children at play because you can't read it anymore okay so if you want to authorize because i got a call where what did you do with that sign Who, why did the road crew take it down and what'd you do with it 
Okay. Oh, I think we need to hang that up in here somewhere. <laughs> it's, it's, I know, I yeah. know, I know. So if you want to authorize I'd, that. I'd actually like to go one step further and, and get like four of them and put them a couple of strategic places along Main Street because like coming and going from the playground, I'd like to have one at each one yeah. of the intersections. Yeah. Um, Do so, you have crosswalk ahead signs or um, I actually didn't. Let me, okay. let me add that. that's going to make yeah. the difference. Yeah. Oh, we have, we have some crosswalk ahead signs? No, what you no. have is no, um, school crossing. School crossing. Okay. So okay. We need crosswalks. We need crosswalks. Okay, so I'll make a motion to, or I mean, if you want to amend the original motion, we can we can do that. But well, you could just make another motion. Yeah, make another motion uh, to to add to the order four children at play signs, and uh, let's get like five crosswalk ahead signs. Hopefully, people will be nice. Oh, second, five crosswalk ahead. Yeah, before we vote, could, um, could we actually make that an even six? That way, I can put one on each side of like. Six facing. crosswalk ahead. Yeah. Okay. So Irene second. Yes. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. <clears throat> Leave room on the top of those speed signs. I want to, I'll buy flags to put up there in the spring. I figure if we put a, if we put an American flag on top of both of those and somebody says, I didn't see it. <laughs> then we'll stop them. Yeah. How tall are the poles, Butch? I don't know. I don't know if you can attach it to the how, how how tall are the poles? They're ten foot. We're gonna have to sink some. Oh, so what what yeah, as I say, what we can do is since it's a standard size pole, we can get a, another bracket and like yeah. a one of those like fiberglass things yeah. and just yeah, that'll yeah. Work yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like we just we get another clamp and we just we can clamp it all. Well, pretty much whenever you want on there. No, I wasn't thinking we could go straight up. You're yeah, right. and then you can go real tall with that too, as long as it's okay. not like if it's not metal, especially if it's like fiberglass or something, you can get a pretty decent span on that, and it's gonna perfect. Yeah. So okay, we're gonna have to bury probably three or four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing it's not going to be super expensive, but we might want to consider is getting some like decaling the, like the, the hazard stripes, the black and yellow to put on the bottom of the pole. That way people don't idea. like whack into them. Yeah, that's a good idea. Too, um, yeah. well, Chuck had mentioned something at the last meeting. Don't our poles need to have some kind of compliance with pen dot regulations? We need to clarify that. I don't know offhand. Right. We um, need to clarify that point. Because in the event that they're struck, they need to collapse in a certain way. So I know he said that, but but we're a municipality and we have to comply with the law. So we need to make sure anything further. I think, with the exception of these two signs, that we yeah. anything further. Needs yeah, to yeah, yeah. Compliance. Yeah, yeah. So tell let's us. let's let's ask. Let's telephone ask. Poles are, let's ask to be sure. Poles. I was I was just about to say telephone that's, poles that's, tend to that's, tend to be a little resistant to getting hit by things. Different. Um, but, um, yeah, let's let's double check just to be sure. But um, bare minimum, okay. we'll put the ones in, and like right. I said, we'll we'll do our due diligence to make sure right. that they're well seen, and right. we'll look into what the the decaling would cost. I'll yeah. see if I can get something for um, next meeting to be able to say like yay or nay on it. Okay. That's a good idea. Well, they they told me down at Main Street. Uh, the 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 streets out the posts those aren't strong enough for that's why mm -hmm. I went, right yeah that's yeah. why I went and got these uh, pool and Paul meeting the the strong for strength yeah right. yep okay next <laughs> item on the agenda is the extension of a stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to, to uh, Main Street. McCarthy Engineering had completed a site survey and a PA1 call was performed. Uh, there is a gas line running along the east side of Marion Drive and Main Street. Uh, Mangat Dentistry had provided uh, some to us for stormwater improvements back in 2014. Um, Jim McCarthy had asked to have an on-site meeting. I'd like to set something up with Jim McCarthy, uh, Chuck Hess, and myself. I was unfortunately out of state most of the past four weeks. Uh, so I had not had a chance to do that walkthrough, but we'll be hopefully doing that sometime in the next couple of weeks as everybody's availability uh, permits around the Christmas holiday uh, and get that kind of finalized. My initial reaction to this is if we have it on the east side of the street, we'll just dig the pipe in on the west side of the street and avoid the whole situation. But I need to talk to the engineers. Um, 
that should be something that we can very easily turn Butch and some of the other road crew guys loose on now that we have the backhoe, mm -hmm. get that in, get that done, and uh, hopefully address one of the underlying issues that has been plaguing some of the people on Main Street for the past couple of years. Uh, next item is the William Penn Boulevard culvert. Uh, Engineer Hess received an email from Todd Geltmacher at Red Barn about a large concrete stormwater pipe that goes under William Penn Boulevard and discharges onto Roy Zartman's property. It appears the pipe is in disrepair. Uh, we did receive some photos of that. Uh, Engineer Hess suggested that we first determine how deep the right-of-way is in that area and if, it's, uh, if the unconnected joint is in our right-of-way or on the property owner's land. So I'd like to authorize Chuck to look into that further and uh, give us the correct information on if it is within our right of way or if it is property owner responsibility. And I guess I'm that making would, a motion. I'll, I'll call on a motion. Okay. I'll start to Chuck to look into further. Yep. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jen. Aye. Okay. Okay. Already <laughs> carried. Next is the Comcast franchise renewal. The engagement letter has been signed and emailed to Cohen Law Group. At this point, we haven't heard back yet, and we'll just kind of hang tight and wait. Um, next item is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403 Amendment. This is the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. Uh, last month, we made a motion to present this to the Western Berks Joint Zoning um, uh, Planning Commission. We have not heard back yet. So again, much like the prior item, we just have to kind of wait and see when that gets scheduled. Uh, next, building property renovations and items around the new building. Uh, engineer Hess recommended a specialty contractor evaluate the brick wall above the garage that is bowing out. Uh, he did send us several building designs. Um, I had sent one to everybody. I don't know if everybody got a chance to look at that. Um, I tried to keep it mm -hmm. as kind of modular and square as we possibly could to keep construction costs and complexity down. Um, Sue did contact a property owner along 422 about selling some land. Um, I had spitballed an idea to Sue that we should maybe reach out to um, Mr. Benich about subdividing the land up there. I personally, I think it's in the ideal spot. It's on this side of 422 and it is pretty much the exact center between the village uh, the communities on Sheridan and Shady Cabin Circle There's alongside, a, um, it's about, it's, it's a hill. It's a hill. It's at the end of town, east end of town. I mean, we can, we can work around yeah. some yeah. of that, but it's, it's like all the major populated areas, Stonecroft, <laughs> um, Pulpy View, all of that stuff. It's like right in the middle and it's undeveloped land and okay. it's on this side of the highway, which means we don't have to have people trying to cross 422 on foot. Um, how many acres is it? It's, I don't know the acreage off the top of my head, but it's quite a few. Okay. So, and then there's that other parcel on Canal that was recently sold. It's zoned highway commercial, but can build anything on highway commercial. Yeah. Okay. So we have some options. And I guess, you know, <laughs> in the last meeting we even talked about, would we demo this property? If we don't have to, I would, pr I would prefer to save that as the absolute last mm -hmm. resort. But some some concept actually Linda had made this suggestion. If this if this property was demoed, then it's salvaging as much as we can. But mm -hmm. a lot of stuff could be sold off. Yeah, you know. And yeah. I, again, yeah. last resort. Yeah. And if we go that route, I'm a hundred percent for um, reclaiming as much as we can. Like yeah. for example, if we can keep some of the the existing woodwork or the bricks or light fixtures in right. a certain area. Um, things that try to preserve the character of the building as kind of a compromise mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the demolition. But again, personal opinion on this is I'd much rather move through the exercise of talking to Conrad Weiser about releasing the playground so that it's not yeah. the, not tied to the deed restriction. Gotcha. That's the and next, that's, that's the Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But okay. going down the avenue of trying to divorce the two aspects okay. of the property and then building elsewhere so that we don't have to knock down something that is whether it's on the historical register or not, it is, it is. There's, it, there's it, sentimental value. Was, yeah. It, so buy it, they could buy it. Yeah. They don't have sentimental value. Yeah. Um, so then my next question is if we can agree on a, on a uh, design. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, we, someone says, yes, I'll sell you the proper amount of land. Yeah. yeah. And let's say everything else goes forward. Conrad Wise says, you can keep the park. You could sell the building. We could split the deed and we're all good here. 
Uh, we would still dedicate funds to revising the park as, as mm -hmm. we had discussed. Um, then the next question for me is as far as cost goes, Penn Strategies, when I spoke to them about grants, we'll do stuff like that. Is it, do you want me to reach out to more agencies? Do you want me to sure. see if Kimberly is going to be the person that does that? But the thing is, whenever there's a question that's asked, there's always a cost associated with it. So having seen the information that Kimberly put together for us on the last grant, it's just gathering information. And so I could I could hopefully have a page or two of saying, you know, the population of Marion Township is this. Um, we have the need to have a new building because our building is falling apart. Uh, in addition to that, you know, we'd like it to serve as evacuation center. We've had so many incidents within this area of the Berks County, as well as we border Lebanon County, and um, we would serve as an evacuation center, except, you know, blah, 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 you know, et cetera, et cetera. As long as I could get a little bit of help putting together all this information, that's going to hopefully decrease some of our costs if I put together the data that they need and can verify it um, with as much hard facts and information as, as needed. Um, but again, there's still, there's usually a cost to asking the question. So um, all I need is then if we get the, so basically at this point, we need to know if we could get released from the deed and split the park from the building. We need a design plan we can agree on along with costs for that build plus a piece of property. So once I have all that information, I'll, I'll start putting together the information because that overlaps with some of the needs that John has for equipment requests as well as uh, police department requests. Mm -hmm. So um, I've already done some of the work, just as like kind of an outline and starting to get some of the information, but that's what I need from everyone. So I guess this is kind of crazy that it, this might become a reality here in the near future. Yeah. But really we we're gonna have to rely a lot on grants. Yeah, it's like it's no money. It's grant dependent. Yeah. That's the only way that we can do yeah. this. And 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 letter writing, we could we could ask for money, can't we? <clears throat> I'm gonna write to crazy people if I you know, if I have to, hey, you know, you're famous and rich, can you help us out? Yeah. We'll, we'll name we'll name yeah. one of the rooms after you in the Yeah. In the yeah. I mean, why not? You know, stranger things have happened, but um yeah, and I guess there is still some ARP funds available at a federal level, and it's just finding out who we need to tap into to get that kind of stuff done. And maybe it is writing to the senators and whatnot, but. Okay, okay so I guess the next thing we got to do is we got to talk to Chuck about referrals or if he has anybody that he'd recommend for the uh specialty contractor to evaluate the brick wall yeah because he he yeah, yeah. if, yeah. if that blows out i made a comment to sue like that's we're screwed we're screwed we are like i use different language at yeah. the time but we're we're screwed yeah. if that yeah. decides to cave in we have to evacuate the building yeah I well, guess. at that point i don't yeah. know if the building is technically habitable yeah. right right so exactly just pulling the stuff out Oh my God. Okay, next item on the agenda as kind of a segue is the property deed. Uh, Attorney McFarland reviewed the deed to the township property and analyzed the restrictive covenant, which reads, in the event that the said premises and any buildings thereon erected are no longer used for municipal or authority purposes, the said premises shall revert to the Conrad Weiser Area School District. The township could potentially raise the current building with the intent to construct a new, new municipal building while retaining title to the premises because the land would still be used for municipal purposes. For a reversion to the school district, the plain language of that covenant requires that both the premises and any building thereon are no longer being used for municipal, uh, municipal purposes, not one or the other. Uh, alternatively, if the township wanted to sell the property to a third party, non-governmental entity, then it would likely need the school district's release from the covenant. Attorney George suggested that a letter be sent to the solicitor of the school district to request this release. Uh, if agreeable, we he would prepare a document to have signed, notarized, and recorded to extinguish any rights of the school district. Um, I'd like to authorize uh, Kozlov Stout, whether it's Attorney George or Attorney McFarlane, uh, to draft a letter to the Conrad Weiser School District solicitor requesting uh, the release or di dissolution of that covenant on the re for the deed restriction. Second. So interesting. It Roll is. call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item is the 2023 budget. This was accepted at the October 27th Board of Supervisor meeting and advertised on November 4th. 
It was available for public inspection and we did not receive any requests to inspect. Uh, a motion will be needed to adopt the 2023 budget, which I recommend that we do at Thursday night's meeting for, for visibility's purposes. Um, the same thing for the next item, which is the adoption of the 2023 real estate, street light and sewer levy uh, rates. The real estate tax is set at 2.75 mils. Street light tax is at 0.65 and the sewer levy is uh, still at $50. This so was... I, I checked with Andy, and we do need a resolution because we changed the okay. millage. Okay. But um, Alicia said um, the sewer levy does not need to be included. We have, um, I forget if it's an ordinance or a resolution for that. Mm -hmm. And that says as long as it's not changed, it that will remain in effect. Okay. That resolution will remain in effect. Okay. So, so at, this, at Thursday night, we need to adopt 2022 yeah, that date. So they drafted because. I okay. wasn't quite sure how to word it, so they did it. Okay. Now I have that for going forward. Okay, so we'll have that for Thursday night then, mm -hmm. too. Okay. Next item is the terms that are expiring in, in January 2023. Uh, all have agreed to serve another term except for Nancy Carrington, who has moved outside of the township. Uh, these are appointed at the reorganizational meeting. The first one is uh, Mervyn Brubaker on the Planning Commission. Uh, Mervyn has, I believe, graciously accepted uh, the the, or expressed a willingness to serve another term. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bourbon. Uh, David Weber for zoning hearing. Uh, the vacancy board chairman position, which Irene, I believe you had yep. said that you had somebody. Have, and I got Carolyn. another one. Kelly Cox is interested. Okay. Okay. So we um, have two. So we'll we'll need to discuss that at uh, the Thursday night meeting and well, see. That's, who... that's done at reorg. Well, no, but I mean, like to figure out like, oh, oh, okay. compare because I don't want to I don't want to go into a huge discussion yeah. at the reorg meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So let's let's figure out kind of way Kelly versus Christina. Christina and, just lets you do it if there was no one else available. I okay, think so she's going to be heartbroken if she's not selected. Kelly, yeah, do you, you kind of understand the, the ins and outs of what, what yeah. that position entails? Okay. It's it's very minimal. So the only time the vacancy chairman gets tapped is if there's a vacancy on the board. Like if, let's say, I were to move or Jim were to move or, or something. Um, and the remaining two supervisors cannot reach a consensus mm -hmm. on their own. You, you effectively are the tiebreaker on that. Um, or in instances where there, the, I, I got to check the statute, but I think there's uh, rare occurrences where the entire board vacancies for some catastrophic reason that you're in charge of appointing um, at least two people so that they can select the third if it's out of out of an election cycle. Um, otherwise, you don't have to do anything. So, uh, if Kelly's interested, well, again, we can talk about it more on Thursday night, but if yeah. she's got an express interest in it and the other person was just, hey, if nobody else will yeah. do it, yeah. then I'd say let's let's appoint Kelly. Okay. Me too. So, okay. The last one is John Seleski for the Emergency Management okay, Board. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Last, last thing. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, John Seleski for the uh, Emergency Management Coordinator position, which is a uh, every year we reappoint. John has agreed to do that again next year. So thank you, John. Uh, and uh, we'll reappoint everybody at the reorg meeting, uh, which is January the third. No, fourth. Because well, it's the first. You think this day is on the Monday. Yeah. So our reorg is the third. Third. Yeah, Tuesday yeah. the third. The third at seven p.m. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And auditor elected auditor Auditor's meeting is the fourth. The fourth at seven p.m. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the donation requests. We have received requests from Helping Harvest, Burke's History Center, Conrad Weiser High School Graduation Party, and the Wolmelsdorf Community Wait, Library. And Burke's, we got Burke's Nature after I talked to you. Ah, Burke's yeah, Nature we too. Got the graduation party request. Yeah, this year we did. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, we had it before because of COVID. They didn't have it. Okay. Okay. So we will need to decide what we want to do. We budgeted about $1,500. For donations so we'll potentially we decide that thursday well yeah yeah, yeah 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 i mean it's we're not in a big rush but we're, we're, we're going to need to figure out how we want to divide that well um so the next one 19. oh okay i, I apologize i missed i skipped right by that you, yep. what you donated last year okay so the donations <laughs> for 2023 based on what we did for 2022 uh, we had given BCCD a donation of $650. They've been very good to us in the past for a lot of grants. Uh, Berks County Library for $50. Berks Nature, formerly the Berks Conservancy, for $200. Uh, the Center for Excellence in Local Government at Albright College, $50. Crime Alert Berks County, $100. Wilmersdorf Community Library, 200 
Helping Harvest Food Bank, $150, and the Womelsdorf Fire Company, $100. Um, Prior so, to that, we yeah. would give the graduation party $50. Okay. I mean, I'm honestly okay with amending the budget for another $50. $50 off the BCCD. I'm good with that. Okay. <laughs> or, I mean, Brick's Nature. Yeah. Like yeah, let's, Nobody really uses yeah. that. Let's let's do that. Let's do that 150 and let's do the graduating class. All right. I'm, I'm taking notes. It's on yeah. the Google Drive. Um just so I know when I'm writing the checks. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, like I said, I'm I'm making notes on the Google Drive copy, so you'll you'll be able to see my so the, the Brooks County Conservancy was an organization that then split and became Brooks County Conservation District and Brooks Nature. Mm -hmm. So it, I'd rather see more money go elsewhere than to go to Brooks Nature personally. Okay. But, I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed know, to that. Yeah. Um, where would you guys want to see stuff allocated? Do you want to put more? Because I know the Wolmelsdorf Library, we gave 200 bucks last year. Yep. Do you think that's a good amount, or do we want to reallocate something from Burke's Nature over to there? But we give another fifty to Wilmot or Fire. Okay. Okay. Works for me. They really jump in and help us out quite a bit. Um, and uh, CELIG, uh, Center for Excellence in Local Government Albright, they do. They host so many programs throughout the year. Mm -hmm. I know none of us really get to attend know. them. But they're you, constantly sending us updated information. Do you want to take that fifty dollars out of Burke's Conservancy or Burke's Nature? Burke's Nature. Okay, so we're down to fifty dollars for Burke's Nature and a hundred dollars for the uh, CELG. Yep. Okay. okay. So as it stands, our our current format is BCCD six hundred and fifty, Burke Burke's County Library fifty, Burke's Nature fifty, CELG one hundred, Crime Alert Burke's one hundred, Wolmelsdorf Community Library two hundred, Helping Harvest Food Bank one hundred and fifty, Wolmelsdorf Fire one hundred and fifty, and the graduating class uh, fifty dollars. I, I have no objections to this if you guys are comfortable with that. Very much so. Okay. So let's save the motion for Thursday okay. night. But we'll, uh, we'll, unless, I'll that. unless everybody like sleeps on this and says, hey, I want to make changes, that's really what we're going to, we'll go through. We'll, I'll list the, the amounts again and we'll just approve it on Thursday so night. So I'll list on the agenda what I have on the agenda and yeah. then I'll say this is what we'll discuss at the meeting. Yes. We'll workshop it. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Have a good one, Kelly. <clears throat> okay, next is the professional services solic solicitation letters. Uh, we have received letters from Acela Architects and Engineers, as well as the Animal Rescue League. Um, I don't think we really need action on either of them, as we just appointed an, uh, an engineering company, and we have not gotten the Animal Rescue League uh, contract for the past number of years because it's of cost. It's interesting that they don't say on here how much they're going to charge us, but they're going to charge us. So. Yeah. yeah, it's there's the, the reason that we stopped doing it is because the cost went it's through the roof. High. Yeah. Um, I personally, I like supporting organizations like that, but it just was not, mm -hmm. it wasn't feasible from a cost standpoint. Um, next, the craft uh, code services and craft engineering are merging as of January 21st and are becoming craft municipal group incorporated. There are no major changes to this and will not affect how they service our municipality. So mm -hmm. largely just a, an FYI on that. Mm -hmm. uh, the 2023 Fee schedules for professional services have uh, largely been sent in. We have received one from System Design Engineering and Craft Municipal Group. We have not gotten anything from Burks and Virotech, Kozlov Stout, or Attorney Keith Moody. I think we, we got Kozlov Stout. Did we get Kozlov Stouts? Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. yeah. I think we ended up getting, yeah, we got Kozlov Stout. Six, six okay. percent increase yeah. or something like that. I don't remember. I mean, I'm, I'm not shocked by that. Everything's yeah, going everything's up everywhere. Up. And our, well, our fee schedule. We need I to think, amend it. Yeah, so, like, did you, I know I sent that, we sent it a couple yeah. weeks ago. Do you need me to send it again? Uh, no, it's at okay. the top of my inbox. I just, okay. the disclosure, have not gotten a chance to look at it. Okay, that's okay, that's okay. You know, like, everything is done in Excel, and I did the comparison yeah. against uh, other stuff. Yeah, so that's, I think we should probably shoot for doing that January, like, okay. after the reorg yep. meeting. Let's do that in January, set that. Or February. Yeah, because yeah. that's, that's going to be a yeah. Well, okay. special. Yeah, so January or February, one, one of the early months in Q1, we should do that. Um, Chuck even suggested we update our 
saldo ordinance. Yeah, yeah, we, we need to update the fees in the saldo. Yeah. The saldo fees, I think, are like 12 or 13 ordinance, years old at a yeah, minimum. I think it was the ordinance itself. Well, that that's that needs to be done, too. The ordinance itself is like 20 years old. But the fees are, the fees yeah. cover our costs. So one of the things that I want to see us do next year, and this, this kind of falls into that whole, like, strategic vision thing, is get into the habit of annually or every other year revisiting the fee schedule right. and we get talked about um that. and then periodically yeah. because we have a fair number of ordinances um making it but making the fees it are adopted by resolution yeah right? they're not technically attached to the ordinance well yeah so so you can change we, we can change them at any time i'm just saying we just we get into the habit of periodically reviewing this because to, to put it bluntly the cost of things change very very quickly and unfortunately they always go up and never down mm -hmm. so just getting into the the cadence of looking at it on a routine schedule and then doing kind of the same thing for the ordinances like we don't have to do them with that kind of frequency but maybe breaking it into chunks and saying okay this year we're going to look through the first quarter of the ordinances and see if we need to update anything or change anything or whatever um that way we can be kind of proactive to certain things rather than reactive in the case of like that that four, section 403 about the animals that we can start right. to pick up on things that have become sort of blue law so so just like forgive me i'm not terrible with computer language so you're able to pull all those fees up in an Excel schedule, mm -hmm. just like when you do the budget. Mm -hmm. Basically, we could we could have a format like yeah. that, and that's that's amazing yeah. that we could do it, and we could detail it. And because some of the stuff just didn't make sense to me as I was typing it in, and I'm thinking, okay, I need to include this. Yeah. And again, having that I, that concept of what we have now, versus and plus a possible anticipated fees. So th there's just so much that's in there. Yeah, um, it's it's a it's a yeah. big file. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of content yeah. on that. But yeah, and that would. Just, like, Stuff is, well, and I like Chuck and Law because yeah. I know on the application fees, mm -hmm. uh, even he said your fees are really confusing. I mean, I have no idea what to tell people to do. Yeah, yeah, I I want to simplify this. Right. And listed, and I don't right. know what Chuck right. yeah. looks at. Right. You know, and what yeah. what Chuck had proposed is that we have an upfront thousand dollar fee, right? Kind of as an escrow. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, as an escrow. Yeah, but. And so then when people come in, so again, like, like it's so we, much work. We need to write out a process yeah. and we need to streamline it. Because like yeah. with most of the things that we've approached over the past couple of years, yeah. this is a, an amalgam of things that have existed in pieces that have yep. kind of yep. accumulated yep. and are, are this ball of things right now. What we need to do, <laughs> I'll use the Christmas analogy because it's around Christmas time, is we need to unravel the Christmas lights straighten them out and make sure the bulbs work right we need so to employ best practices. yes and we need to set a standard that way yep this works. this isn't a reinvention of the wheel every time yep because mm -hmm. that's what it's been it's yeah employee best practices um what, well, i know what i've been doing is just uh, writing everything down as far as the process goes mm -hmm. in reference books in the in the uh aa room now and so when there's something that we've implemented a good policy for it's done and Whoever has to do it next, if I'm not here to tell them, there should be a written format so they can follow along. Yep. So, all right. So, so you can you can do I your, can, yeah, your I, computer magic with everything so that yeah. it could become part of the annual review and we could adopt things by resolution as needed. Yeah, okay. and and like I said, ideally, I'd like to kind of force our hand and put things strategically on the agenda for like in March. Mm -hmm. We do. We always do fee analysis yeah. in June. We always look at a, a, a we select. I don't want to say random, but we pick ordinances that we haven't looked at oldest first okay. and we review them. And we just start getting into that routine and it won't be, it won't be such a big exercise. It'll just be something that we do every June or we do every yeah. March. Absolutely. So. I'd, I'd, I'd like to do that. Yeah. Okay. Step out for just a minute. Sure. So we'll take a, a real brief intermission. <laughs> you want me to, you want me to keep going? The next couple items are house housekeeping anyway. So um, the PSAP membership dues, uh, we've received the invoice for this. We will need to make a motion to uh, pay the actual dues, which we can do on, on Thursday night. Uh, and we'd also need a motion to add Linda to the PSAP's roster and authorize a subscription to the, the PA Township News Magazine. Um, I'd actually, for the, the Township News Magazine, I'd say just like when we redo all that, I'll just, if there's one here, you can take mine off and I'll just read it there's here. Not, we don't get one. Okay. Here. Everybody gets them at home. Yeah. So like I haven't gotten a huge opportunity to read much other than flipping through them periodically. So I can just commandeer somebody else's and we can shave a, a subscription out of there, save a couple of bucks. Okay. Well, I mean, if 
we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure that out on Thursday night. Added it to the, or the invoice. Um, she, uh, no, no, no. It's, it's, to add her, I mean, we could always just we, do it that way and then cancel with them too. Well, I mean, we can always just give her mine. Um, so to add her to get in magazine, um, they told me to just write it on the invoice before you, and then pay the invoice with yeah. that. I yeah. Don't want it. Okay. So that's what I did. I mean, we can do that and then just cancel one. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, that's fine. It's already kind of. I did this. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll navigate it. We'll we'll make it work. Started. Yeah, we'll make it work. <clears throat> or we just contact them and say, hey, like don't don't bill for that. Just to switch Peters over to Linda. Um, I, I mean, keep in mind the three of you get one. I yeah. get one. Yeah. Um, Dan gets one. Yeah. Harold Manda gets one. Okay underlying point is i don't read them that extensively i understand I yeah do get them. yeah so if somebody brings it in at some point i'll i'll leave through it at that mm -hmm. point um you didn't, you didn't miss anything Aaron. um we were just talking about the uh the p sets uh membership dues we have the invoice um and i was saying i haven't gotten to read mine the past number of months like in any sort of real capacity well, I read so every month. yeah so what I, what i was saying is if somebody eventually brings it in i can i can flip through it here and we can save ourselves the cost of a subscription sure that would um, be absolutely fine because i'm good with because i read it online yeah 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 that's not a bad idea yeah I mean, if you're reading it online, does yeah. the I think that we have you have to have the subscription. Yeah, subscription. yeah, you have to have the subscription to be able to do that. But um, that might be something that we could even thin that down, and just she could use the subscription that we have for like you or, or somebody else if you're going to do it digitally. Psats.org and and the it's the whatever what's the comment board discussion yeah. discussion board yeah yeah we'll we'll talk about it more on Thursday night, but we might be able to to make that a little leaner than it already is to here and i'll just read it here yeah yeah so we'll we'll figure it out yeah, yeah we have a communal copy then here are your things here pass we each got one of those that's the next item okay uh next is the psat 2022 salary survey which uh sue is passing down jim your names are on this mm. The oh, so there's irene's oh, there's the jim's i'll trade you yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you I, I wish we had time to do this. I don't know how people make this their full time job. Well, if they're, if I, well, I mean, the, that's that's how they do it. They right, make it their full time right. job. But um, <laughs> these are larger townships with a lot more of a tax base that yeah. support a, a full time salary. Because, yeah, I could not do this full time with what the case here. And I would want to to take away from that's, the monies that we could use for the community. Yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. Okay, next is the 2023 Educational Conference and Exhibit Show for PSATs, which will be held on April 23rd through 26th at the Hershey Lodge. Registration opens January 10th, 2023, and can be done online. It costs $175 per person. Uh, a motion would be needed to authorize who can attend, along with cost and mileage to be paid by the township. Last year, we authorized any supervisor, secretary, treasurer, or road crew to attend. Um, do we want to make a similar motion for this upcoming year? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion to authorize any interested supervisor, secretary, treasurer, or member of the road crew to attend the PSATS 2023 educational conference and exhibit show at the Hershey Lodge on April 23rd through 26th. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Irene. Aye. Sorry, sorry. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Okay, that is the final item on the agenda. So I think John actually stepped out. Um, we can come back to that. Uh, I don't have any major comments other than I hope everybody has a wonderful set of holidays. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. We don't see you at the Thursday night meeting. Um, it's been a good year. There's a lot of things that we maybe not have executed fully on, but it's, it's a long, slow process to get things done like culverts. Yeah. And we're, we're most of the way through it. This is, we've set the, the groundwork, the stage, so to speak is, is, is there for 2023 to be very, very, very busy. Yeah. So, uh, I, I really value each and every one of you on the board, Sue, Linda, it's good to have you on the team, but I really do appreciate all the, the hard work and the dedication that each and every one of you put in to this day in and day out. Um, so Irene, do you have any comments? Uh, yeah, I apologize. I haven't really been around the office this past week. My work schedule has been a little difficult along with some other personal issues, but 
Um, I still have yet to reach out to the police department to get some further information to help work on that uh, aspect. So hopefully I'll be able to get some more information, reach out to Penn Strategies, get a ballpark idea of what a grant may cost, um, working with them with respect to helping um, the police department uh, gain some equipment and possibly, as I know I've mentioned on other meetings, working with them uh, to see if we could have like a joint agreement just to help with a portion of the cost of the grant and not anything else um, as far as uh, obliging ourselves financially to helping out the police department. But I, I want to throw whatever we can and help them with the support because for the services that they do yeah. uh, for us. Right. It's yeah. really in our best interest right. to help them out right. because right. Like, we don't have our own police department and we do value the, the partnership that we have with them in that respect. Yeah. So, And I know at the last meeting you had mentioned about helping them pay for the MDT mm -hmm. and that was a cost of $6,000. Again, I, I need to get clarification on that. So if we, if it is truly $6,000 and we did throw uh, three thousand dollars out that so well, they could get what they need. Well, my suggestion was let's find out how many municipalities they service and right. maybe right. help them out by right. reaching out and saying, exactly. Hey, yes, let's say they have four other municipalities right. that they cover saying, right. Hey, it's six thousand dollars. Can we can we count? We want we want to help. Can we count right. on your support to right. split this four ways and right. buy them the computer that they exactly. need for the cruiser? Exactly. So. And so 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 I've got I've got my homework to do on, on that front. And as I mentioned before with the building, once once we know because I hate to say putting the story together, which is basically what they did for the grant. Putting the story together is is what's important for getting to for securing any kind of a grant. So we're so far behind in so many things that should have been maintained. You know, I think again, like you said, thank you to everyone here. Everyone, I, I think we've had a really big shift in in the way we're going about doing things. We're trying to structure things so that it's um more just a, a, a matter of routine practice. Mm -hmm. These, this is what the job is. It doesn't matter who's filling those seats. Let's employ the best practices. Let, this is what needs to be done. It doesn't matter who you are, what, what background you're coming from. This is what needs to get done. The bills need to be paid. It has to be a certain format. Uh, audits need to be <clears throat> done. Paperwork needs to be done, et cetera. So I really want to thank everyone for, for doing all the work that they, they have this past year. And just like Peter said, it's just been Absolutely wonderful. I, I can't say if I've ever had a better group of coworkers. You guys are great. So thank you very much. So one quick thing, because I actually thought of a couple of things yeah. while you were talking. Um, I'll bring it up on Thursday, but yeah. for uh, next year, one of the things that I'd like to do is assess switching from Zoom to Teams. Okay. Um, we use Teams a lot at work, and it's generally a little easier to use. It's a little more user-friendly. Uh, and it's also, I think, only six bucks a month. Oh, okay, so, yes. Um, I'll, I'll do a demo first part of the year on that, but it should be a pretty seamless thing. The only thing we might have to do is like put in the newspaper that our, uh, the way of accessing the meeting is switching from zoom to teams and then putting the, the link in there. Um, the other thing is just popped into my head, the gate for canal road yes. for the flooding. Yes. Um, we don't have to do anything with it now, but I want to build that into one of the projects next year so yes. that if we have a catastrophic event that we can close that road off to prevent people from trying to for ford the river at that point right um that but a newer problem yeah so I, I wrote that down and i'll i'll make sure that i send that over to suda to, to kind of keep that as the something floating around on the agenda but um that's a pretty easy one that should all be right away work we don't have to do anything crazy with that it would just be notifying property owners that that's it's something that's happening um so with that said, I apologize for the kind of no, the backpedal on order of things. No, but um, is, we, we, we get each other, ideas from each other. I'm looking forward to what Linda has in the office too. She's already made some interesting suggestions. So I just got to clear out the depth. So she has full reign of that um, yeah. uh, area. So if anything, I might need to get another file cabinet, but I don't think so. I'm trying to make do with what we have. If, if we do, let us know. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about it at one of the meetings. Yeah. Um, any additional comments, Ari? No, thank you. Okay, Jim. Just a uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, yeah. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, it's also come to my attention that years ago, I guess, there used to be an appreciation dinner for staff and volunteers and board members. And I'd like us to think about possibly doing that in 2023. Yeah. So they, they used to have a banquet um, 
that and everyone who was on served the served Mary and Township in any way, zoning hearing, um, like all the different committees, um, were all invited. Of course not everyone showed up, but yeah. And then they had some kind of a speaker um give out little door prizes. I'll tell you, if we do new building, I've got some great ideas. My sister runs a pie baking contest mm -hmm. in her town. She lives in New Hampshire. And uh, they raise funds for local uh, organizations and we have some of the data. So I hate to say it, having a new building would benefit us greatly. So even if the physical building couldn't hold a space, if we're looking at four double bays of truck space, mm -hmm. that's gonna hold a lot of stuff because all the stuff could yeah. be pulled out. We could have so well, many community events. Well, we could do so much more. The the design yeah. that I sent over, one yeah. of the things that I would very yeah. much like to see as a criticality for the space is the large meeting room, the, yeah. the huge hall that can be split in half. Yeah. Because then yeah. we could rent it out for banquets or right. weddings or whatever. Right. But then we could also do things even above and beyond, like with the, the banquet, the appreciation dinner, is we could have a uh, municipal appreciation dinner and open it to the public where right. the the members of committees and stuff like that get free admission but we do a, kind of like a spaghetti supper sort of thing mm -hmm. where people from the community it's it's going to be whatever it is and it's eight bucks for a ticket or ten bucks for a ticket and you come out mm -hmm. and we'll you'll yeah. we'll get remarks from yeah. all the supervisors and like the attorney and things like that maybe some things about like the year in review right and just kind of make a, a an event out of it um i think it would be a, yeah, a I mean, nice thing to do because mm -hmm. Our staff doesn't get paid enough for what they do. Right. We have volunteers. Well, even the, I mean, the, all the committees, with the road mostly you know, like planning and commission and zoning. They don't get paid at all. Thank you. Volunteer. They don't get paid. Yeah. yeah. And uh, other than like the, the meeting right. things that were required to take, none of us draw a paycheck. Mm -hmm. right. So we're all effectively I volunteers too. Fascinating. I give it to all the departments. Mm -hmm. I give it to the library. So yeah, I mean, there, there's so much that we can do and, and, we can become a community hub again, mm -hmm. you know, so that these things are known. So like with the pie contest, my sister's done this, I think for over a decade and everyone like, there's so many organizations and businesses that donate to it and then they yeah, give out, you know, little awards to the people with the best, they have judges, mm -hmm. they have MC. Yeah. I mean, there's things like that. Can you imagine like if we became like the focus of like an annual pie contest right before Thanksgiving and kind of, if, if everyone would look forward to starting I'd, the holiday season. I'd, I'd like yeah. to see us, and this is why, like I said about that big space, is getting the ability to be able to do like, okay, the community association is going to do bingo nights every Wednesday. Right. Or like a chilly right. kickoff in the summertime. No, or uh, I know well, we don't want to compete yeah. with Wolverine, yeah. but right. I mean, we could have it at a different time right. of the year. Right. Uh, or have like a craft show. Or right. like exactly. we, there's there's so many there's things so many that things we could we do that do. we just, to put it bluntly, don't yeah. have the facilities to do. Yep. Yeah. Yep, and it could be open to the county, and once something like that's open to the county, there's good advertising and there's good word of mouth, then you really created events that people enjoy and want to come to. And even if the first year isn't such a great it, it takes time to years always do. Yeah. Time, so. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. Any other comments, Jim? No, sure. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Linda, any comments for you? No. Okay. Sue? Um, nothing really, months. just happy holidays. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. Right, John. Uh, John, since you're back, right. would you uh, you like to come up and give us a run through on the uh, So EMC? do you want to do that now? I mean, I mean, we should probably the, have it, it was approved at the October meeting, so it's just a matter of he wants question he wants answers from you guys. Do okay. you want to wait until after the farmers meeting? I mean, um, it's up to you. Do you want to close the meeting first? Um, okay. Okay. So, I mean, you can adjourn the meeting well, and just have him do it. Yeah. It, so I mean, it was you, already approved at a meeting. So, so the question is, like, really? with the farmers, butcher, you gonna do you need the space in here for that, or do you want to like go sit? Okay. It's up to you. I mean, we can we can always go over in the other. Let's. Yeah. Let's say we can we can always adjourn the meeting and you just talk to John over in the other room. So okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. What's the time? 10, the time is ten thirty four. Um. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone.